Hello, and welcome to your first free training video for the Microsoft 7412 certification exam. All of these videos are free of charge and will get you ready for the Microsoft 7412 exam. In this video, I will be exploring Network Load Balancing Clustering, or NLB clustering as it is sometimes known. The aim of this lesson is to understand what network load balancing is, to familiarise yourself with network load balancing terminology, and to look at which services you would implement network load balancing for. So, first things first, what exactly is network load balancing? Network load balancing is essentially a type of clustering. For those of you that are relatively new to the world of IT, a cluster is simply two or more servers which work together to provide a specific service. Windows Server 2012 R2 offers two main types of clustering. These are network load balancing clustering and failover clustering. For now, we will focus on network load balancing clustering. Failover clustering will be explored in more detail in later lessons. To understand how network load balancing works, it is best to imagine a world without network load balancing. Let's say, for example, you have a server on your network. This server has the Internet Information Services role installed, which essentially means the server can host a website. This server has a certain amount of resources, such as CPU, RAM and hard disk space. When a client visits the website hosted on this server, this will naturally put some strain on the server's resources. The problem occurs when you get many client computers visiting the website requesting web pages. As you can imagine, this server by itself could easily become overwhelmed, which can slow down the website or even worse, crash the server. If this happens, the website will become unavailable. With network load balancing, you can fix this problem by creating an NLB cluster. Let's imagine that you purchase two more servers, which you also install Internet Information Services on. Next, you install the Network Load Balancing feature onto all three servers, which is required to create an NLB cluster. In a later lesson, I will demonstrate how to install this feature. From this point on, the three servers will work together to provide the service, and client requests are distributed amongst the servers in the cluster. That is, the first client will be directed to the first server, the second client will be directed to the second server, and the third client to the third server. This process is completely hidden from the client. As far as the client is aware, they are connecting to a single server. Another advantage to network load balancing is that it is able to tolerate a server failure. That is, if one server in the NLB cluster was to experience a problem and had to be taken down for repair, the remaining servers in the NLB cluster can continue to provide the service to the clients and the load will just be redistributed. When the failed server comes back online, it will rejoin the cluster and start to serve web pages again. Network load balancing also provides great scalability. If demand for the website was to grow, you can simply add another server to the NLB cluster. You can have up to 32 computers in a single NLB cluster. Likewise, you can also remove a server from an NLB cluster at any time if demand for the service was to decrease. Now that you understand how network load balancing works, the next thing you should be familiar with is network load balancing terminology. I would familiarise yourself as much as possible with this terminology, as you can expect to see it on the exam. When multiple servers are combined together to create a network load balancing cluster, this can be known as a network load balancing cluster, an NLB cluster, 
a web farm or a server farm. These names are used interchangeably, but generally they all mean the same thing. Furthermore, each of the servers participating in the NLB cluster is referred to as a host or a node. As you can see, there are quite a few definitions to be familiar with. I would ensure that you are familiar with all of them before taking your exam. Now that we have covered what network load balancing is, how it works and the terminology behind it, the last topic to discuss is which type of services it can support. Network load balancing clustering is not designed to load balance all network services. Network load balancing is intended to load balance stateless applications. A stateless application, in a nutshell, treats all client requests as independent tasks. This is how it is able to load balance and distribute client requests so effectively. It is also important to remember that the individual nodes that make up the NLB cluster cannot share their resources with the other servers in the cluster. What this means is that once a client is directed to one of the hosts in the cluster, it can only access the resources on that particular host. Stateless applications often have read-only data, or data that changes very infrequently. This is typical for front-end web servers, VPN servers, FTP servers, or firewall and proxy servers. Network load balancing should not be used to load balance services where clients can update the data. Recall that each host in an NLB cluster works independently, that is, changes made to one host are not copied to the other hosts in the cluster. This is why you should avoid putting file servers, print servers, database servers and messaging servers into an NLB cluster. That about covers it for this first lesson in this free Microsoft 7412 course. In our next lesson, I will demonstrate how to install the network load balancing feature in Windows Server 2012 R2 using both Server Manager and Windows PowerShell. If you'd like to see more Windows Server 2012 R2 training videos, please check out our YouTube channel. Many thanks, and we'll see you in the next lesson.